Hey there YouTube, I'm Jean and welcome to Crypto Picks. I want to start off with saying thank you so much to all my subscribers and those of you that are new. I hope you find my channel informative and enjoyable. I've grown a little over 100 subscribers since yesterday and I finally made it over 1000 this morning. Super exciting and again I am so grateful. Thank you so much. So today I'm doing my PTMGS analysis on Modem or Mod. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button right here. Well, let's get started. So what does PTMGS stand for? It's the problems they solve, the project idea, potential for generating revenue, the team, the marketing, the market cap, the short slash long-term goals of the project, and then the summary slash stars that I'm going to rate the coin. So what problems is Modem trying to solve? They want to make sure at a very advanced and technical level that everything is sent and received at specific standards set by the sender, their client, or the regulator, and they send notifications whenever this event occurs. So what about Modem's project idea? Modern offers a more efficient supply chain solution, which allows companies to use the blockchain and Internet of Things to provide data integrity for transactions of physical products. Through smart contracts, the data is collected and validates that the transaction meets specific standards set by the customer, their client, or the regulator. So Modem already has a working temperature logger prototype, which is used to track shipments in several pilot projects within Europe to the Middle East. They are launching their first proprietary sensor device based on findings from each pilot. Their go-to market strategy is regulatory driven and based on requirements placed on the pharma industry where they are already working with industry partners and clients to deliver their system where they claim the cost per shipment can be reduced by up to 60%. They also claim that their system can be expanded to healthcare, the chemical industry, heavy machinery, automotive, aerospace and aviation, and the food sector. So it's definitely a positive thing to see that they already have a working prototype and partners within the pharma industry and it's pretty cool to see that they know that there is a lot of potential for them to branch out and be effective in some of the largest industries available. So what about Modem's potential for generating revenue? The Mod token is used for two primary reasons. First is an incentive to their holders with a profit sharing token structure. They plan to pay profits once they break even. They expect this to happen sometime in 2018. Second is for voting rights. Every mod token in circulation is entitled to one vote. Token holders will vote to decide whether, in their opinion, the team has reached the predefined milestones allowing the locked mod tokens to be released. Locked tokens do not come with voting rights. So now, of course, one of the most important parts, in my opinion, is their team. Their first superstar and only star on their actual team is Simon, who was a senior product manager at GoPro for two years. It's a bit interesting that he has CEO as his title on LinkedIn, but on the website, it says he's joining the team soon. So on the board directors part of the team, we have Pascal, who is a co-founder and a member of the board. He has seven years of experience at Novartis as head sterile assembly packaging and head of process and logistics service. He was also head of design transfer operations at Synthes Europa, which are both huge companies. So he gets a superstar for that. Then Dr. Thomas Boek, he is a star for his five years of experience at the University of Zurich, which is the largest university in Switzerland. So obviously you can see that this isn't the best team out there. They do have a superstar on their team, a superstar on their board of director, and then uh, a star, which is positive. But what worries me is that they have three engineers who have modem as their first and only job on their LinkedIn page. Now for their advisors, which usually when they don't have the best team, they usually have great advisors. These guys don't really have that either. They only have one advisor, which is Dr. Eric Hoffman that I gave a star. He's the vice director of supply chain and logistic management at the University of St. Gellin. 
Outside Dr. Hoffman, they have no other stars or superstars. Closest one would be Heinrich and Benedict, who are both part of Light Corp. But I didn't see any significant experience there, so I didn't give them any stars or superstars. So this is kind of disappointing. So far, they've been pretty good, and their team and advisors aren't that great. Next, we have their marketing. So their Twitter is super active with updates, announcements, and news. And as you can see, November 3rd, November 2nd, November 1st, they are super active. It's nice to see, as I said before in other videos, pretty much every company seems to be super active or the most active on Twitter. So they have no Telegram, no YouTube. Their Facebook is fairly active with several updates and articles in October. Their Medium is not that active since September, which was super active in August. And the Reddit has a very active community, which is kind of a new theme that I'm seeing with these videos. Now for their marketing, the competition that they have. Ambrosis, pretty much a direct competitor of Modem. These guys have a fairly impressive team and they have a all-star advisory team with individuals with past experience at Ethereum, IBM, JP Morgan, and a few other big name companies. So these guys definitely have the edge on the team and the advisors, but Modem has already a working product and they've also have won awards, including Kickstarter Accelerate in 2016. Modem has 43 registered companies that want to use their product and 844 shipments as of now, which is many more than Ambrosis, who I don't even think have a product yet. Granted, I did not do much research on this company, but one difference I did see is Ambrosis seems to be creating their own blockchain, but I'm not really sure why, or even if this is to their advantage. Now, one of the most interesting parts is the market cap. They have 32 million market cap, which is fairly low. They're currently sitting around $1.89 or 25,000 sats. The all time high was $2.56 at 44,000 sats on October 27th. They haven't been out there very long, as you can see from the chart below. They have 17 million circulating supply, 27 million total supply. Their volume the last 24 hours is 1.6 million and was only 2.3 million on October 27th. So again, they haven't been on there that long, so I'm not surprised by these numbers. The exchanges are on Binance and Cost, which I like both. So now the short slash long-term goals of the project. 2018, we have mass production of their dedicated sensor device and product ecosystem. Then we have two environmental sensors integrated into the hardware platform, temperature and motion. Then one of the following blockchains, IOTA, Neo Fabric, ETC, or Rootstock is supported as block chain backend. And then we'll have 3 million tokens are voted on by the community to see if they were able to fulfill their milestones in our opinion. This I actually like. We get to kind of gauge and keep them accountable. And then we have 2019. They're going to deliver the next sensor generation with real-time interaction, another environmental sensor integration with light or humidity, then two additional blockchain backends, then another 3 million tokens are voted on where we can decide if they hit their milestones. Then in 2020, they're going to deliver the next sensor generation with real-time on chip blockchain node, another environmental sensor, lighter humidity obviously whichever one they didn't pick before then they're going to complete their software which will be delivered in a fully decentralized architecture and then again another three million tokens are voted on by the community to see if they hit their milestone so they definitely have a long-term roadmap here and they also have a clear set of goals and which is the best part they have a way for the community to keep the team accountable which is Super nice to see. I feel like almost every team that has tokens should be doing this. It just gives us a more peace of mind. So, in my opinion, Modem is ahead of its time and ahead of its competitors, which is always nice to see. They already have 43 registered companies on board with their products, which is, in my opinion, huge. Another positive is their market cap, which is extremely low, especially for already having a working product and so many companies on board. They could use a bit of work on their team and their advisors aren't the best, especially when you compare them to Ambrosis, which definitely has the upper hand here. 
I'm also not a huge fan of their limited use for their tokens. Uh, I feel like profit sharing and voting is good to have, but since that's their only incentive for having the token, they're lacking there. But at least we get to keep the, the, the company accountable with the voting structure. I do like that. With that being said, let's see what I give Modem in terms of stars. You ready? I'm giving them four out of five stars. And the reason for this is because of their team. They're ahead of their competition. They have a good idea. They have a working prototype. But their team and their advisors were just not there for me to give them a four and a half or five stars. So pretty good project with a few big negatives, which I mentioned. I want to thank you for watching my video on Modem. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.